place it on my heart to share. I just want to take a moment and just acknowledge a couple of things. Um, Researched a predominantly black neighborhood. And he targeted a particular place that he felt would make the most impact. And he decided to go and shoot up a grocery store that he felt would be predominantly occupied by African Americans. And he killed several people. Shortly after that, and he heard what happened in Uvalde, Texas. The young man he shot his grandmother and then proceeded to go to a local elementary school and assassinated about 19 children from seven and fourth grade, from what I understand, there was a couple of teachers that were killed in that incident as well. <clears throat> and when you look at these kinds of things, it's, it's easy to lose sight of godly perspective in all of this. It reminds me of a conversation that I, I had with Rachel uh, just yesterday, we were talking about the godly perspective, how the enemy is doing so many things to bring division and hate in this world. Hmm. How he will cause, he'll whisper in one group of people's ear to try to get them to hate another group. And while he's doing that, he's whispering to the other group that he's trying to get them to hate, to get that hate to spew over to another group. In every direction you look, there's hate and division. Some of it over something as simple as the color of your skin. I've asked the question many times and I've never really gotten an answer to it. And I know why, but the question I like to ask is, what color is your soul? Wow. Does your soul have a nationality? You know, as a Man, I sometimes step back and set aside the fact that I am a man to embrace the fact that I am also a man of God. And as a man of God, it puts me in position to be a father, not only to my children, to my church, to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I find myself being a father to 
all types of people. Regardless of their race. If you have the heart of God, then you are a brother or a sister to people that are outside of your race if you have the same father that I do. Come on. Yeah. If you have the same father that I do, then your father has a rainbow of flavors mm -hmm. that are all unique and different and important. And so one of the challenges that I find myself in as a father is that I not only father people of different races, but uh, of, of different cultures and, and, and different age groups. The young and the old, the rich, the poor, educated, uneducated, those with crystal clean records and those with felonies, they are all my children. Why? Because they are all God's children. <clears throat> One of the things that God has put on my heart to share today as we get into this particular word is that there are places that, that, that we are, both spiritually and emotionally and physically, that we can't stay at, we can't remain in those places. And it's not, um, it's not contingent on whether or not other people stay there. Come on, Pastor, talk about it. What I'm saying is that if God is calling you to move, then it's not a matter of whether or not you're leaving somebody. Mm -hmm. You just know that whether or not they stay there, you have to embrace the fact that you can't stay here. Tell somebody we can't stay here anymore. We can't stay here anymore. I'm in the book of Psalms 137. Scripture that's near and dear to my heart. This, this scripture says, by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. Yeah. We wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And their response was, But how shall we sing the Lord's song? in a strange land. Pray with me from that thought, we can't stay here anymore. Father, I just want to take a moment and thank you for your presence in this place. We know that you're here because we always feel your power. So we thank you for yet another opportunity to come into your presence, sit at your feet, and hear your word. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but only your word shall stand forever. Father, because it's preaching time now, I'm asking you now as always that you would hide me behind the cross. We pray this prayer because we understand that in order for this to happen, Father, I must decrease and you must increase. 
so that when the people look at me, they would continue to see you. Though the people would listen to me, we would all hear from you. Because we never want the focus to be on the messenger, but the message. We never want the focus to be on the man, but the Messiah. So that when all is said and done, only Jesus will be glorified in this house. And your anointing will continue to fall in this place. Like rain. And all who agree. Amen. Amen. This story in our text, it actually begins in a very sad place. Because what's happening here is God's people have been defeated in battle and, and now they've been taken captive by their enemies. This is the children of Israel. They, 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 they were fighting, uh, uh, but they, they, they got defeated. And so the, 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 the enemy that defeated them uh, took them captive. And took them away bound in chains, and chained, and, 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 and they were sorrowful, and they were sad. And so uh, uh, here in this story, in, in order to fully appreciate exactly uh, what's going on here, we need to take a moment uh, to just briefly review the circumstances leading up to this situation that they found themselves in. You see, because this wasn't the first time that the children of Israel had been taken into captivity. They were in captivity again. Most of you Bible scholars know the story where they were, they were taken into captivity in Egypt by Pharaoh. And God sent Moses to deliver them stand before Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go. And there was, there, there, there was the plagues and all of the, all, all of the, the, the plagues that, that, that descended upon uh, Egypt until finally uh, the firstborn was taken out and Pharaoh threw up his hands and let the people go. And so God, uh, 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 after delivering them out of that mess, he brought them out of Egypt with wealth and prosperity. The, the Egyptians was giving them stuff. They, they, they left uh, 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 with, 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 with riches. They were, they were bald. Yeah. <laughs> and then he led them to a land of milk and honey. They got out of their bad situation and God deposited them into the land of milk and honey. That new house, new car, new job, new boo. They had everything. They was, they was ready. The past was behind them. All of the drama that they went through was behind them. They were, they, everything was great. But somewhere along the way, their relationship with God grew cold. Oh, it didn't happen overnight. You see, it was a gradual process. How many of you know how that happens? When suddenly, you don't have to uh, uh, believe God uh, uh, just for survival anymore. But, uh, you know, that there are times where you, you don't have to depend on him for the, the, the basic needs anymore. And so sometimes you 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 you, you skip a prayer. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Tell the truth now. And so so anyway, here in our text as they distance themselves slowly but surely from God, uh, a little bit more each day, eventually they found themselves outside of God's ark of safety, and then now, uh, long after that, they, they, they found themselves right back in bondage again. I just wonder if anybody can relate to what I'm talking about. Does anybody in here know what it's like to get to get caught up in some kind of trouble and then you fight and claw your way out of it just in time to get in trouble all over again? That's it, Pastor. Come on, tell the truth. Can I just keep it real with y'all? 
Because you see, you see, even though we can't always put our finger on it, what we have to understand is that at some point, if we're not careful, we can start to lose some of our enthusiasm about serving God. Well, well. Oh, it's all good in the beginning when God first sets us free from some of the bondage that we're facing. Uh, uh, back when we were way out there. Come on, Pastor. Talk a lot. You know what I mean. Way. But, 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 but is, there, is there anybody in here that knows what it's like to really be free? I ain't talking about being delivered from some kind of bad cold or something like that. I'm talking about getting delivered from some really bad stuff that Amen. was your fault. You can't blame her. You can't blame him. You can't blame them. You can't even blame the devil. It was you. You did it. It, it, it wasn't some kind of accident. You did it on purpose. I need some people who be real enough to, to uh, man up and accept responsibility for some stuff. You did. Woo. Mm. I know what you said, but we ain't playing pity patty. It's because you see, we're at war and the devil is attacking everybody. He's yeah. attacking you, your kids, your, 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 your brothers, your sisters. Uh, he don't care what age, you know, we got kids having to figure out how to, how, how to avoid being shot. Yeah. We can't, we can't, we can't play anymore. That's right. And see, see, there's this thing that, that, that people are, 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 are missing here because, you know, there's, there's three separate entities uh, that, are, that exist. There's the traditional church, and there's the real church. I'm sorry. There's the traditional church. And then there's the real church. That's right. And then there's the streets. Come on. I like y'all don't know what I mean. Come on, Pat. Talk about it. I'm talking about the streets. That's right. And see, here's what the problem is. The traditional church is looking over and trying to be understood by the streets. And the streets is trying to understand the traditional church. Hey. And those of us hey. who are part of the real church are trying to educate both of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't just preach sermons for the traditional church. I preach sermons for the streets.
Now, if the devil ain't at your church every Sunday, then it's not a good church. Amen. 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 Because this bondage that people have about trying to kick Satan out of the church, what people don't understand is that, that, that the devil is in some of the people you're trying to reach. Some of them are saints. At least that's what they call themselves. Now look, God's people have been living beneath our privilege in this poverty and lack mentality for too long. And, and God sent me here to tell these people that it's time to pack your bags because we can stay here. Yeah, but we, we can't do that. This, 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 this lack, slack, uh, penny pension mentality is not going to get you where you want to be. The Bible says that the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Somebody say abundantly. abundantly. See, abundantly don't mean you are trying to figure out uh, uh, how to pinch this penny to pay that penny or rob that Peter to pay that Paul. That's not abundantly. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Talk that, bro. You ought to look over somebody and just tell them to pinch that penny. We can't pay that Because see, 
I've got some wounds that just won't seem to heal. Yes, Lord. Uh, and, and I've got this hurt that just won't seem to go away. I've allowed somebody else to break this heart you gave me all over again. Come on, Pastor. Woo. I know you helped me pick up the, these broken pieces before, and you helped me put it back together. But I need to ask you, will you do it for me again? again. You see, I've got some weaknesses that I can't seem to shake. I know you delivered me from this place before, but I need you to do it again because I don't want to stay here suffering in all this pain. I don't want to stay here drowning in all these tears. But yet, I hear I sit uh, by the river of Babylon weep. And, and listen, I'm weeping because even though I'm in bondage now, I remember what it's like to be free. Yeah. Yeah. And even though, even though I've been carried away uh, uh, from where I know I'm supposed to be in you, I still remember what it's like to walk in the will of God like I'm supposed to. I remember what it's like. I, I'm not a stranger to, 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 to what you told me I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, uh, you never moved. I'm the one that moved. I, I've got too much life ahead of me to just lay here in this place and die. Lord, I don't want to stay here. We've got to get up from here and take our right on the battlefield, we can't stay here anymore. anymore. There, there, there's something I can't stress enough about this verse, about text here, because most people just read right over that part. Woo. That part about the timing of when they started weeping. They wept when they remembered Zion. Now understand, you see, because what you have to understand here is that they weren't weeping because they were in captivity. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. that, that, that wasn't why they were weeping. Come on, come on, come on. They, 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 didn't, they weren't remembering Zion when they first got into the bondage. Come on, Pastor. Sometimes ah, come on. After, it takes a while of you being locked up. Ah. It takes a while of you being in a bad situation before you start to come to yourself. Hey, come on. You see, you see, you see, they, they were weeping because they remembered something, not because they were in captivity. The Bible says they were weeping because they remembered something. You see, even though you, you, you were in captivity, they didn't, they didn't begin to weep about it until they began to remember where they fell from. Mm -hmm. They began to contemplate the progress that they had made. Uh, they know they were walking with God. They could feel his presence all over them. They were so close to God that they could hear his heartbeat and smell his breath. But now where are they? They're in this shortage until they get to the point where they start to remember what it was like to be free. My grandmother, she was poor all her life. She used to tell me, baby, you can't miss what you never had. But, but if, you, if you've ever experienced what it's like to walk in power, mm -hmm. if you've ever experienced what it's really like to walk in authority and know that when you open your mouth and command the demon to go, it has no choice for it to go. You know when you walk into a room and demons start to tremble because they're looking at the bottom of your foot. They know that that's where they belong. You don't even have to say a word. But sometimes you remember who you are and you look in the mirror and you see somebody else. Yeah, come on, come on. Woo, woo. This is not who I am. Right. This, this isn't me. This isn't who God called me and, ah. me and anointed and appointed me to be. This isn't me. If you remember that, you, 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 when you start to come to yourself, devils start getting nervous when you yeah. start to yeah. 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 And then I'm starting to recall yeah. something. Oh, devil, you have lost your mind. Yeah. You think I'm going to stay here and be content and miserable and broken down and excused for a life? Yeah. Oh, no, sir. No, no, no. Not when I know I'm a royal priest in a holy nation. Not when I know I'm a part of a chosen generation. Not when I know I'm a joint heir with Christ. I'm a head and not the tail. I'm a boy and not the people. I'm a leader and not the I got 
got some place to go. I, I, I got to go uh, to some place that you don't know nothing about. I have a destiny to fulfill. I got a future. I got a hope. Uh, we might be down right now, but we're about to get up from here and get to stepping. You ought to look over and tell somebody, we can't stay here anymore. We can't stay here. We can't stay here. Now, I'm about to expose the devil here real quick. Because I know this is, this is you Sunday, and so it's important that, that I keep it concise and, and get straight to the point. Now, young people, I want you to see something that the devil tries to do to all of us. Because just like I'm your father, I'm your parents' father also. And I want all of them to understand this point. The next couple verses in Psalm 137, I'm just going to read through this real quick. It says, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. Now mirth is happiness. Like, you know, come on, Big D. Compton, we'd be happy. Mirth, that means be happy. Sing a song. Be happy. Get it, bitch. <laughs> That's what they were saying. They, they, they that required of us. They, 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 they that carried us away captive. The people that, that, that defeated us and put us in these chains required of us. You better sing a song or something. The ones who wasted us and, and took everything we had, we, they wasted us. They, 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 they destroyed everything that was important to us, and they, they wanted us to be happy about it. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Sing us one of the songs, John. Yeah. Mm. I'm about to expose the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sing us one of the songs. They said, wait a minute. How should we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Well, you, you're acting like I'm going to stay here. <laughs> you, you're trying to get me to just get comfortable. <laughs> the, 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 devil, the devil just wants you to get comfortable in your bondage. Yeah. He wants you to get comfortable with your sin. You know, the, you know, the, 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 the part of your, the part of your, your, your nasty attitudes that people just don't got used to. Ah! Oh! 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 <laughs> the people that were, had enslaved them wanted them to, to, wanted them to sing, a, sing a song. You see, the devil don't mind you coming to church. And he don't mind you praising God as long as you stay bound by you. You can come to church, just come with chains. You can lift your hands and just don't take your shackles off. It's all right if you want to have a pity party every now and then, but at some point, you got to get to the place where you tell the devil that this pity party is over. And you ain't got to go home. They start cutting the lights on and whatnot. You know, it's interesting, like, I've been in situations recently where I've seen, you know, the, 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 the clubs more, more unified than the church. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, God, I'm like, it didn't matter if, that it was, I saw, I saw different colors, I saw different uh, ages, I saw um, uh, different sexual orientations. Yeah. Come on, and you know, old school, right? Like, you know, the, the homophobic 
area, you know, like if, if, a, if, a, if, if someone that was struggling with their sexuality walked into a room, you ready to fight. But I saw straight, gay, white, black, just on one accord. All they need was some direction. And, and here's the thing. Some people will focus on the wrong in this one. Too busy working on oh, your body. Too busy working on other oh, folks, man. Too busy working on your own, man. I mean, the only thing some people heard was homophobic. Hey, come on, You better work on your own, man. What about the dude that's high as a kite? Mm -hmm. He to beat his wife. There's, 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 there's all kinds of, of grime all over the place. But we want to focus on the one that's not socially acceptable. See, there, 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 there's the traditional church. I'm trying to repeat. There's the real church. And there's the truth. The traditional church has been deceived into thinking that they can't learn something. From the streets. And some of y'all still got some streets in you now. Some of y'all ain't here. Don't even front. Some of y'all had to decide whether or not you were going to come to church packing or not. Chill out, y'all. I see you back there, baby. You know, I, yeah, some of y'all understand what I'm talking about. Look, I got the Holy Ghost and fire and all that, but I'm also packing the 9 millimeter <laughs> semi-automatic pistol with ball point ammunition. Oh. Right. Which way you want to carry? Oh, 
this up when we fall, because you know we will. But with that being said, in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. amen.